Seven, six, five, four, three, two.
We all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. Alex is just and adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samhsa.gov. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers. Unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877 227 9421. That's 877 227 9421. Or just visit our website. This is Brad Mills for the Salem Card Show in Salem, Indiana, inviting you out to our next show on May the 6th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Washington County Fairgrounds in Salem, Indiana. We will have over 50 tables of sports cards, non sports cards, including Pokemon sports memorabilia, sports car collecting supplies, modern and vintage cards. This is a great place to buy, sell, or trade your cards. Admission is free. Families are always welcome. Please follow us on all social media at Salem Card Show. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for kids, teens, or young adults. It's just not. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs. And dangerous things like metals and volatile organic compounds into your body. And nicotine, the same highly addictive substance found in regular cigarettes. Nicotine can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. Affecting learning, memory, attention, and impulse control. And priming the brain for other addictions. Vaping products also come in kid-friendly flavors that can make them appealing to youth. And many kids also use other drugs, like marijuana, in vaping devices. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping. Because when you talk, they hear you. Lynx Clothing and Shoes is proud to support West Washington Senator football and wish them a great season. Stop by and see us for all your school fan gear. We offer a wide variety of tees, hoodies, hats, and more. We also offer custom screen printing and embroidery for your team, business, or event. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and have been serving our community for over 15 years. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, and on Saturdays, they're 9 to 3. Stop in or call us at 812-883-4154. That's 812-883-4154. Shop local and save. We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em, remind me about that party again. And Alex adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you.
At Eddie Gilstrap, our customers are family. Rated in the top 6% nationwide in Ford dealers, we pride ourselves on our no-pressure environment, honesty, and integrity. Come see us today and discover why we're different. Eddie Gilstrap Motors. Lynx Clothing and Shoes carries a wide variety of items from name brand clothing and shoes to sports apparel and sporting goods. We offer custom screen printing and embroidery, free gift wrapping alternations and layaway. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5.30, Friday 9 to 6, and Saturday 9 to 5. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and are a family owned and operated business. Stop by and see us today. 812-883-4154. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for youth. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs and dangerous things like metals into your body. And nicotine, which can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping. Because when you talk, they hear you. Gates, Carnegie, Rockefeller, I'm not. Generous, caring, rich in spirit, I am. You don't have to be a person of great wealth to make an impact. When caring individuals give through a flexible, creative, capable organization known as a community foundation, our philanthropic potential is unlimited. As your local community foundation, we provide you the opportunity to permanently support the causes you care about both near and far. We do this by protecting and administering permanent funds through thoughtful grant making to improve the quality of life in the community we serve. Simply put, donors who give through a community foundation build sustainable, permanent funds called endowments through contributions big and small to support organizations they care about most, forever. Through the generosity of our many donors and the responsible, informed investment of permanent funds, we will increase our grant-making ability for the benefit of our community for generations to come. All we need is you. What causes are you passionate about? What organization matters most to you? We can help you ensure your charitable interests are supported forever. Donors can give to an existing endowment or establish their own. Some choose to give now, while others make their gift later through their will or estate plan. To learn what your options are, talk to your community foundation. We're here to help you reach your philanthropic goals. If you love our community, let's leave our little corner of the world a bit better than we found it. Not just today, but for future generations too. The Washington County Community Foundation has been making our home a terrific place to live, work, and play since 1993 through the generosity of donors just like you. Why? Well, just like you, we also really love our community. Welcome to West Washington live stream here for our second game of the Lagodi Regional. My name is Brad Mills. I'm joined today by Craig Akers. We have a great game for you here in this second game tonight as the Rock Creek Lions take on the new Washington Mustangs. Uh, both teams coming off uh, some great sectional wins. Uh, none probably greater than the Rock Creek Lions, Craig, uh, with a buzzard beater there. Oh, yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, Rock Creek able to knock off a Borden team who was probably the sectional favorite coming into that. But once you saw Rock Creek play and looked into their schedule, who they played, you know, that was a, a whole mother ball game. You know, Rock Creek coming in 10 and 14 into this game. Um, but when you look at their schedule, it's all three and four A teams. So they are battle tested for sure. New Wash comes into this game 13 and 13, an even record. Um, but, you know, they're, they've got some seniors. I believe they start uh, four seniors on their um, team. So, you know, it's a, both of these are, are experienced teams, which is probably why they're here, Brad. 
Yeah, and that's uh, when you got this one game regional for a trip to semi state uh, with both of these teams. In 2017, New Washington went there. Um, when I was at a previous school, I watched them. They had an amazing team. Uh, they're going to have a lot of fans there to back them up. Rock Creek, a team that we saw for three games, actually four if you count our regular season game at West Washington, uh, that it has a lot of athletes that has the ability to really uh, take some games to the next level. Yeah, you know, when you look at the, the Rock Creek Lions, they've got, um, you know, the, <laughs> how do you, how do you uh, compete with a seven-footer in Mario Dipper? I mean, he's, he's, he's a seven-footer, you know, at a 1A school, which you don't see very often. And then when he comes out of the game, um, <laughs> Jaleb Treat is – Caleb he, Treat, he, he's, he, a, he, he's a treat. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, a, he's, he's an amazing he, player. You know, he's um, the six, I asked seven Coach Brown four. in my interview. I said, he's, please he's don't a, let him bring the ball down the floor. Other than that, he's good. Yeah, yeah, he's a six-seven forward. You know that that can do it all, averaging twelve points, eight rebounds, fills up the the stat line. Um, but probably the the guy on their team that makes him go is K1 Biko. I mean, he's a he's a yeah. six-three senior. He's the one who knocked down that shot against Borden. He's he's kind of their their go-to when they need some offense. Um, you know, they rely on Ladarius Wallace to bring the ball up the floor, the 5'8 senior, averaging 14 a game. So, I mean, he can he can definitely put the ball in the bucket. Um, but just a, an overall team that can, can play just about at every level. Well, we've got some interviews today as the teams are taking the court. I talked to Coach Chris Brown of the Rock Creek Lions. I believe we're going to be going to that interview. Am I correct? Yeah, you're correct. So we're going to roll to that interview, and we will be back uh here in just a few minutes okay welcome to west washington live stream for our regional coverage i'm joined by the rock creek lions head coach mr chris brown chris thank you for joining us thanks for having me today brad hey uh chris you've uh we were talking before we went on air about the miles that the lions have put on uh travel in the past few weeks and uh you get to make one more trip up here to lagodi i know that you're very excited for that but uh tell us about that sectional win Oh, it, it's indescribable, honestly. It it's, goes down as probably the best win, and it, it just because of how it all turned out and, and uh, such a, it's a rival. I mean, we played rivals all uh, throughout the sectional tournament, and uh, that, it, that's one of the toughest sections in the state, 1A, no doubt. Uh, with You know, five teams had a legitimate chance of winning, and comes down to the, that last 15, 20 seconds was just unreal. I mean, it, it was a class, It was a thriller. If you didn't know, please go on the West Washington live stream and watch that on the ITSA Champions Network. Well, I think we had, Chris, I think five lead changes there in the final minute. Does that sound about right to you, Coach? Probably so, yeah. Probably so. It was uh, back it in – We just couldn't – yeah, we just couldn't put it away with the free throw line. We left <laughs> 7 of 10, and that's not good enough. you gotta, you got to be, be better. That, that, was the, that was proven that day. And, you know, uh, Coach, you guys have that. And uh, I just want to know you got a lot of great coaches on your staff there. Who drew up that last play? Well, I, I did. I mean, we practiced a play. We got two uh, game enders. I'm probably two for life <laughs> when yeah. it comes to them actually coming out to fruition. And uh, I, I was kind of surprised at how they defended that, honestly. Uh, I thought they would face guard Ladarius, and uh, uh, they didn't. And uh, we had them peel away because I thought we'd be face guarded. And Jalen Treat peeled away, and then you see Kibon go. Sprint to the corner and then Ladarius gets a clean look, good pass. I actually kind of got on him the next time, put a little bit more uh, zip on the pass because he floated it. And and, uh, and uh, but the, the, he just hit the bottom of the net. I mean, it's kind of similar to the IU shot he hit in '87. But um, you know, just it, it's it is it is what it is. Shades of Keith Smart there is correct as the uh, Lions move on. You know, if you look at your team, you know, people look at statistics, they're going to see your big guys, which you have two really good big guys. But I tell you what, something that impressed me from watching three games here at the West Washington sectional was the play of your guards. Can you speak to them? Yeah, our guards are, are – they've gotten better. Uh, Ladarius is our leader. He's our captain and uh, the four-year starter, and he's he's paid his dues. He's – um He's put in a lot of time. I mean, he's Jim Rat. All these kids are Jim Rats, honestly, and uh, just can't keep him out of it. And, uh, and, and we have two sophomores that are coming into their own, and and uh, Kalen Brown is a defensive player for us, and uh, he actually had two big threes that last game. And 
huge threes. We've not shot the ball well from the outside. And we've toned those down. Um, I think we were three of five on the three-point line. And uh, everybody knows our strength is inside. And we like to get up and go and, and defend and get after it and be scrappy. But uh, Javon Taylor and Kalen Brown have kind of came into their own being, being sophomores. And uh, they're quick as lightning. And Kalen, we got back. He had a broken wrist right before uh, tryouts. And we just got him back about a month and a half ago. He's starting to play better. He's getting stronger and, and uh, you know, getting more comfortable playing at that level. And uh, Ladarius, you know, kind of go as he goes. He leads us and uh, he, he, we go over game plans and what we're doing and he kind of runs the show while he's out there and, and does a pretty good job of it. So, yeah, we're right now they're playing. We just got to keep, you know, from this, everything, it's all bonus. I mean, you got to survive in advance from here on out. So if you, you all want to keep playing and practicing, we got to keep doing the right things and, and uh, that's what we'll find out Saturday. And that's what the Lions did in the West Washington sectional. They were they had a, a epic game in the first game. It went down to a final shot against Christian Academy, and then of course we um, talked about the viral video of the ending there with the um, walk off winner there in the sectional championship against Borden. I kind of glazed over those big guys, Coach. But hey, you got to tell me about those big guys because I tell you what, they work hard. Um, they go at it. Um, can you describe about how much they've developed and what they mean to your team? Well, I mean, Jaleb, Jaleb's a big kid. He's, he's, he's worked hard in the weight room. He's, he's still a big kid, but he was bigger than he was, and he's really trimmed down and thinned down compared to who he was as a freshman. And uh, I wish Mario had some of his. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as far as his, his girth, girth goes, because Mario could – He's, he's standing. He's going to gain some weight for sure, but he just that's his body type. And uh, But they've gotten so much better. Mario uh, has – he, you know, he's coming off a shoulder injury, so he's not blocked as many shots as he did last year. He set our school record with like he was like number four in the state, I think, in block shots total for seventy three last year, I think, or seventy seven. I can't remember. a lot, and he's uh, he's about half that this year, but he's still doing a pretty good job. I think he had eight or nine for the tournament, which isn't a bad deal for three games. But um, they 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 are high low. We've worked on it meticulously for you know, three years, and. Um, we, we, I mean, that, that's our best friend is them passing to each other, passing out. Your highest percentage three point shot is a kick out from the paint. Um, and so we, the ones we hit, we seem to do those, you know, that. And, and, uh, but Jaleb and Mario have done a tremendous job and they get banged on. I'm on hats off to Jaleb because he's a, he's a focus because he's got such good footwork and he's polished. And, uh, being six, seven, he's a big target, but, um, you know, he's done, he's done a tremendous job of passing. I think he had, Five seven. Um, I think he had 16 assists for the three games uh, in the tournament, which is unheard of for a big guy. So he, you know, he and he did. He played well. He played well, but also had to be the passer at times because they were, you know, keeping him out and, and you know out from the bucket. So that, that's the way we look at it. We try to we try to feed it into him, but we'll be patient with the guards that hopefully can penetrate and create some gaps and. And get them guys open as well, and and uh, with four guys balanced uh, at you know double figures, right at the ten to twelve range, twelve to 10 range, it, it, we got guys that can score, so it's not just one one or two people. And coach, you they can those two big guys can do just about anything on the floor, except uh, you just don't want them to bring the ball down the floor. That was the I think the maddest I saw coach. There was a point where uh, one of the big guys was trying to bring it down the floor, and Coach Brown's like, "Stop it, stop it, stop it, get to one of the guards." And uh, he was able to do do that. Uh, you got some buddy hops, you know. You got some hops, coach. I'm going to give that to you. You got you got up there on that that play. Uh, and then uh, yeah, well, uh, my. Yeah, they. Uh, I don't mind that they bring it up. It's just it's normally just gonna. It depends on the junk of the game. I, in a tight game like that, give it up. Let's be safe. And you know, I, it, the flow of the game is better, and it's not as tight. I don't mind them bringing it up, and the guards can run to the wings and run a fast break transition offense. But you know, if it's tight, tight, uh, it better. And that Christian Academy game, they uh, treat treat had a bad, bad turnover, and he looked at me and pounded his chest, saying, "My bad." And I was like, "Oh yeah, we know. Everybody knows." Should have gave it up to a guard, and but we we play the next play, and that's what we did that last four seconds in that timeout, drawing that play up is play the next play. You, you can't live in the past, you know. You can't live in that, that history. You gotta you learn from it, and move on. So last year, I don't know that we were able to do that. These guys have matured a little bit, and we, they were able to focus. And, and uh, Tree was one of them, man. Jaleb in that lot, in that timeout. We got one more play, guys. We got one more play. And, and I we tell- it up. They 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 tuned in and listened and and, and uh, executed, and that was good. 
And that's what you can really say when you get to, uh, you know, winning sectionals are a little bit about luck, a little bit about talent, and a little bit about um, making sure that you have the right mindset. I know this team, uh, if you're listening to this broadcast today, get on John Harrell. Look at uh, look at Rock Creek's uh, schedule. It's one of the toughest in single A. Um, Coach Brown will go anywhere, anytime, and play anybody. I mean, I, I think he would try to take on Ty, uh, Tyrese Halberton and the Pacers if he could this season. He's uh, He's gotten just about everybody on there. Um, Coach, how has that helped you guys? Guys here come tournament time being that battle tested this is brad mills for the salem card show in salem indiana inviting you out to our next show on may the 6th from 9 a.m to 2 p.m at the washington county fairgrounds in salem indiana we will have over 50 tables of sports cards non-sports cards including pokemon sports memorabilia sports card collecting supplies modern and vintage cards this is a great place to buy sell or trade your cards admission is free families are always welcome please follow us on all social media at Salem Card Show. We are back to Back you. live here at Lagodi High School. Thank you so much to Coach Chris Brown for uh, interviewing there. We went a little long on that one, so I apologize for cutting it short, but Coach Brown's a, a great interview. When you get him going, you just usually can't get him stopped. But I wanted to make sure that we got this interview with uh, Tori Winchester, the coach of the new Washington Mustangs, on. Uh, Craig, just real quick, your thoughts on the, the Mustangs? You know the Mustangs are going to have to play a pretty good, pretty good defense here. They're going to be outsized underneath. You know they don't go as big as what Rock Creek does, so you know they're definitely going to be at the disadvantage there. But they may have better outside shooters um, than Rock Creek. Rock Creek really struggled with the three-point shot when it came to the uh, when it came to sectional play. So I think you know the the Mustangs are going to try to try to win this game from outside. If you're tuning in this game and haven't seen New Washington play, Matthew Arthur is one you want to really pencil in. The guy can really shoot. He's somebody who will uh, really uh, take the flow of this game for New Washington. Uh, New Washington with a lot of ups and downs this year. Um, Coach uh, Winchester comes on uh, to this uh, team and uh, does a great job. He's got a great pedigree. He was at uh, Providence last year on their state championship team as a coach. Uh, his brother was also one of the greatest players I ever got to see play in high school basketball for the Austin Eagles. Cost me a sectional my junior year. He played at Western Kentucky. Um, that was Anthony. And uh, so Torrey's got a great uh, career ahead of him at New Washington. Craig, if we can, can we go to the interview? Yep, we'll roll right into that interview. Welcome to West Washington Livestream. Here for the regional pregame interview with new Washington head coach, Tori Winchester. Tori, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, can you tell us about your team's big sectional win against Rising Sun the other night? Yeah, you know, uh, I thought we had a great week of practice. And uh, the, the guys really, really, you know, dug in and, and just, just just bought in to, you know, to the scouts, the game plan, to the execution. And, you know, it, it, it was really a... a uh, you know, a total team effort, and uh, I, I feel like it was one on the defensive end. And I tell you, those guys are not going to argue with you the importance of free throws after that game because I saw the box score. Free throws were huge down the stretch for you, weren't they? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, down the stretch, we, we got the ball to, to uh, our playmakers. We did a great job of finding those guys. And, you know, Matt and Mason really stepped up and, and sought the basketball, and uh, they were absolutely instrumental in, in putting it away. So you um, switch gears now, and you got a one-game regional. Um, you know, being around Indian high school basketball, those are very uh, – it's a little bit different. But, you know, hey, to come home, what would it mean for New Washington and for you guys to uh, claim a regional here on Saturday? You know, um, I, I can't really – uh, put into words what, what what it would mean to you know not only our 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 team but our program and and that community it's a it's that community just it loves its basketball program and those guys um, and you, you know it, it would be the the third one in school history and I, I don't know if I could put put words to you know do justice what what it would mean to to that community 
You know, Coach, uh, you get into that. Um, planning is a lot easier for uh, a regional just to plan for one team. And, you know, sectional week uh, after you win is a, a busy and crazy week. Um, do you have a lot of uh, good senior leadership on your team or older uh, players that have kind of helped everybody to stay focused during this week? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, Matt Arthur and Mason Thompson, those are four-year guys who are you know, a four-year letterman, and, you know, uh, Matt, a uh, four-year starter, Mason Thompson was really, you know, in the fire as a freshman as well. Those guys, you know, they're on, um, <clears throat> you, you, you know, they're, they're, they're doing what you want out of your seniors, and they, they lead by example. Matt's really a, a, a real vocal leader guy, you know, guy for us, and, uh, he's our point guard, and, the, you know, those two guys are really the heartbeat of our team. You know, Coach, uh, you got a, a good opponent here. You know, there's no bad teams left at this point in the year in Rock Creek. Um, what have you seen from them? What do you expect from them? Well, they're they're so talented. I mean, just they they have so much talent and you know, those guys are battle-tested. They played a tremendous schedule, and, uh, you know, they have great great size and athleticism and, and, and talent. It's going to be a tough task. You know, and that's what you bring up, and that's the good thing about these, uh, these 1A and, game, you know, conferences i know that the sac this year you guys have played in has been a very tough conference you look at some of the teams there you know whether it was conference champion henryville to a great south central team to a great borden team um a lot of good games so uh your schedule too has been uh you know one that's kind of battle tested you guys um as you uh go in here to this last week and stuff of you know we talk about how things change, you know, practices and everything, and everybody kind of gets you out there, and they want, you know, there's so much commitments, including like this. Um, you know, your level of focus there. Uh, have your kids, uh, have your kids, as they went through this, are are they focused uh, in your mind or um, content? Are they still? Do they still have a big hunger for it? You know. Um Coming in on Tuesday with with all the delays that that happened throughout the state, you know it was a tough ask to have those guys not even, you know, probably just twelve to sixteen hours after, you know, winning the the first sectional here since twenty seventeen and the second one since I believe two thousand one. You know, it was a tough task for those guys to come in and just say, okay, it's it's time to move to the to the next chapter but uh you know we kind of got that uh first practice out of the way and i thought yesterday we just had great focus and great energy and got back to doing all the things that made us the sectional 62 champion and i'm really proud of these guys they seem really locked in and ready for the moment well, I tell you, Coach Winchester, that's pretty hard when you got to, you know, sweep the, you're starting practice when the uh, confetti from the night before has just been swept off. And then you got to get a bunch of uh, 17, 18 year olds focused for, uh, you know, a big week here. But uh, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we appreciate you here at West Washington Livestream for joining us. Uh, and uh, we wish you guys the best of luck. I, I can tell you this, if New Washington ever gets into a regional, um, they do really well, so uh, I'm going to say that. I watched the 17 team uh, in person when I was at South Central, and so I know that they are. Uh, this is a great um, program and a great hungry fan base there that wants to see the win. So I know that the Mustangs will have a big crowd, and uh, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you. Back to Jack Butcher Arena here at West Washington, or at uh, Lagodi, not at West <laughs> Washington, <laughs> where the home Rock Creek Lions will take on the visiting uh, New Washington Mustangs. Brad, thoughts? We got about three minutes before the game. All right, I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be, this game's going to come down to New Washington's ability to knock the shots down from the outside. I don't know that they have the speed nor the uh, – uh, real ability to get inside of those uh, twin towers there of uh, uh, Rock Creek. Rock Creek has to do what they did in the West Washington sectional, which is stay calm, play their game. Something that I was amazed, Craig, that they came off 
and they were able to slow the tempo down against Borden when they wanted to run a little bit, and they were able to capitalize that and keep that game in their favor. I, I think it's going to be a, a game of runs, like we say, but I think Rock Creek's got a clear advantage today. Yeah, you're. I, I feel like you're exactly right. There's there's no um, there's no evening out the hype that Rock Creek brings. You know, they may have the three biggest kids on the floor with Biko um, being the third. You know, they for sure have the first two. So it's going to be a, a tall task for the Mustangs to be able to knock off this Rock Creek Lion team. And as always, we're, are we going to have a national anthem before this game? I, I believe we, gonna... we are. I I don't know for sure yet. I'm looking across <laughs> the way to see if see if they're going to play it, but I would assume we are. The teams have gone to the benches, which those of you there at home can see. They're at the bench uh, ready for the start of this game. They take the balls off the floor. Still 55 seconds on the clock. So, If they roll to the national anthem, we'll slide out to ours and uh, yeah. uh, then a commercial if we have to. Uh, Craig, um, I, I will say the tempo of this game is going to be interesting to see. I don't know if New Walsh wants to slow it down. Rock Creek, of course, if you get in a transition game with them, they are um, a very you know, a very good team when it comes to that transition game. Uh, their last loss was against our West Washington Senators, and that was without um, – who were they without that night? Was that they, were without, they didn't have? No, it was Biko that they didn't have. Biko. And so we'll see here as we get ready. Biko's a human highlight film when he gets a chance. <laughs> But there is yeah, that, just there's a lot of great basketball players for both these teams. Right, those of you who uh, got to see the dunk that he threw down in the first round of sectional, that was an, a super athletic move. I have uh, I have I have not seen a dunk like that since a, a gentleman who uh, named Tony Allen, who played for the Boston Celtics and the Memphis Grizzlies, did it to me um, when I was at Vincennes, and that was when he was at Wabash University. So they're introducing the non-starters here for both teams. Now, Craig, I was looking at New Wash and something there. It seems like they are a lot like we talked about with uh, Northeast Dew Boys earlier. Very senior, a lot of seniors laid there, and then that, that's that five or six guy rotation they really run. Right. You know, their their go-to is going to be uh, the Arthur boy. He, he can definitely score, you know, the 5'11 senior. And then Rock Creek, you know, getting them in foul trouble is definitely going to be a key for New Wash as they go along today because they're going to have to do that as we see all these intros coming in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be I, – I feel like you you said it's going to be, you know, the, the run of tempo. Who can, who can run the tempo that they want? Um, you know, if it's a, a slow game, they slow it down. I think that the uh, New Washington Mustangs have a have an advantage if it's the the up and down game. I think that the um, Rock Creek Lions have the advantage. Yeah, and I tell you what, this is a team of Rock Creek. That there's a lot of kids on there that have put a lot of work. Some of these seniors, especially, coming in, and uh, we've seen them grow. We see them every year on the schedule here, so we've seen them get better and better as they went along. And like we were looking at, I think you and I were talking all the way back in January. Yeah, look at their schedule. Their record wasn't that good. But we were saying, hey, look at that schedule. That's a tough schedule. Yeah. And it's paid off for them right now. There's there's only there was only 63 other teams that won a sectional. Nobody cares what your record is as long as you won a sectional. All right. First out for the Rock Creek Lions is Ladarius Wallace, the, the uh, 5'8 senior. Out next BD. is... K1 Biko, the 6'3 senior. Then Gavin Taylor, the 5'3 sophomore. <laughs> then Mario. And Dipper, then the 7-footer. The 7-foot senior. And then the last one out is Jaleb Treat, the 6'7 senior. So uh, if you look at their guard uh, size compared to their big man, it is it reminds me of the old the old Verizon, you know, bars on your phone. Yeah. All the way down <laughs> to little bitty to really big. But, you know, the the new Washington Mustangs start what I would consider five guards. Yeah. You know, the 6'2 sophomore Mason Arthur is going to be the one to jump center here. And a lot of times we see Biko jump center, who is 6'3. So the, the third tallest on Rock Creek against the tallest from New Wash. So. <laughs>
Ball goes up and Newash is going to control the opening tip. And here we talk about that pace. Let's see what they want to do here. Newash settles into their offense, which is going to be a motion style offense. First bucket up and good for Matthew Arthur. It's going to be a turnover for Rock Creek. And then a foul. With Deary, no, that is number 12, Gavin Taylor. Yeah, Gavin got beat there and then just turns, Taylor gets beat and just turns around and uh, adds to it there. Might have saved a breakaway layup, though. Yeah. Glittner going to be the one to bring this ball up against Biko. Back to Glittner out on top. He's looking for some offense. He gets by Biko, gets to the rim, puts that one up and in for two. Not scared at all, the new Washington Mustangs. Nope, goes right at the seven-footer and gets it up there. Wallace doing the ball handling duty. Off to Taylor in the corner to Biko. Biko back to uh, Taylor. Taylor drives, gets by, and gets that easy two. That's the lead. Makes it 4-2. New wash out ahead. Glittner coming up. Arthur stops, drives, gets that one up on the rim. It's no good. First miss of the game for them. Great job by New Washington getting back there. And another turnover by the Lions. Connor Schaefer doing some ball handling out on top. He's only 5'6". He's definitely... Ooh, gonna he's going to get him on the foul on there. That no... That's on Mason Arthur there. Newash going to give some token pressure on the inbounds there. Wallace bringing it up, being guarded by Schaefer. Hands off to Taylor. Taylor breaks down over to Dipper. Dipper in the paint, up and good for two. And that's what the Lions want to do here. Yeah, the Mustangs came out strong with the first four. The Lions have answered back with the next four. Going to be a turnover there. It looked like there was just a lot of uh, bodies falling on the floor there, and there was nobody in the passing lane when they needed it. Wallace to Taylor. Taylor out to Dipper. Dipper with the drive. Going to be a foul on the floor. They get number 20, Mason Arthur, for his second. And that's going to be a quick sub they're going to have to make. The Mustangs are. Out top to Biko. Biko over to Taylor. Taylor back to Wallace. Into Dipper. Dipper high-low, unable to get that one up. That's a missed shot and a rebound for New Wash, who then kicks it ahead quickly. I don't know if that was a pass to treat. I thought it was. Yeah, I think it was, but it was just off off target there. There's a steal back the other way. Dipper with the dunk. And that's what New Wash does not want to do. They don't right, want to give those can't. easy... You can't turn it over and get in transition there. Arthur puts that one up. It's no mm. good. Taylor thought about it, pulled it back down over to Biko. Biko into Dipper.
We went out. That one almost I thought could have went the other way there as the Mustangs are not afraid of Dipper. They're they're banging the boards there. Yeah. Here's where it's going to be really hard for the Mustangs in this yeah. half court trying to match up with Dipper's size. And then you got Jalen Treat, who's just a unbelievable force down low, too. Wallace misses the three. Oh, great shot there by number Schaefer. 14. Yeah. Schaefer knocks that down to pull them ahead one. Taylor tries. Taylor. Good. Turnover back the other way for the Mustangs. Going to be off Biko's foot, so coming back. Three turnovers each way. I was going to say from the direction of that ball, somebody had yeah, to somebody hit, hit it with, it with, their, with foot. their foot. Three twelve left to go here in the first. Rock Creek moves it around the perimeter. Mustangs looking there. They're going to take it to the corner there. It looks like, no, they're going to get inside. Oh, nice recovery. They're coming back out, setting up their offense. It's going to be an offensive foul on number five, Paul Glittner. Yeah, he – uh. Had a little moving there as he was trying to set that screen. Yeah. Wallace brings it up. Dipper up and good for two underneath. Gives him six. Mason Thompson there. Nice spin oh. move, 360. And they're going to call it on the floor. <laughs> Those of you at home get to see that replay of the 360 layup there. What Devon a Taylor play, but didn't count. Second foul. Up and no good, three-point miss. Ladarius with a great drive there off the mark. Mason Thompson with the rebound. There's a three, that one no good. Biko with that rebound. Biko down the lane, no call. Treat up and good for two. His first bucket of the game. Nice move there by Matthew Arthur. He's just a great shooter, Craig. He makes so many great plays for these Mustangs. Rock Creek down into the corner, kicks it out top. 22 checked in, Kalen Brown. Dipper loses it for a second, but then gets it back and puts it up. Moves the lead out to three. And if you're the Mustangs, you can't give them those second chance opportunities. Caleb Tree falls down there on the sidelines. Biko does a good job of getting his hand on the ball there, but knocks it out of bounds. So Rock Creek going to go back on defense. Going to be a foul on the ground. I believe they're going to get 22 for that. That's Kalen Brown's first.
Hayden Midkiff there, number 10, just got in the game. 13 seconds left here for the Mustangs. They take it up top. It's going to be a foul. Ooh. I think number 10 is Memphis Jackson. I think they've got the... the Memphis... Yeah, you might be correct. Yeah, I think, I've, I think it's wrong on this, so... I've got it now. Yes, you are correct. Yep. Misses that first one. A couple second break there. <laughs> Coach Brown says, get in there and get me a rebound. Yeah. Jackson right back out of the game. Second one up. It's no good. What I tell you. <laughs> Treat up. After one quarter of play, the Rock Creek Lions are up 12-9. to nine. Over the new Washington Mustangs, alongside Craig Akers, I'm Brad Mills. We're going to go away for a quick commercial break. We all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. And adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Back to action here at Jack Butcher Arena where the Mustangs do trail the Rock Creek Lions 9 to 12. We see our first sub Kind of a little... In. Our, our first sub in for New Wash is number 44. Uh... Hessig. Floppy first quarter by both teams here. We'll see what uh, they can do to make it up here in the second. Pico drives. Down the lane. No good. New Wash definitely has gotten a lot of good misses by the uh, lines there. They've been able to capitalize. They're not afraid of them. We haven't really see, seen that size take over other than the one dunk. That three, no good. I think we're going to get a foul on Treat. Yep, J. Little Treat oh. picking up his first. Comes in the corner to Arthur. Arthur drives down the lane, gets up, and then it's swatted by Dipper. Deep one from Arthur. That one draws nothing but the backboard. Going to stay with him, though. Yeah, I think Treat might have hit it with a paw there, and it just goes right out of bounds. Yep. So Comes the Mustangs right off are his gonna... hand. There's a three in the corner. That one no good. Wallace with the rebound. Back the other way. Treat. Going to get called for steps. So that's going to be a turnover for them. Fourth on them. <clears throat> New Wash very aware, Craig, that they've got to get back. You notice when they're, they're doing a great job of hustling back on defense there. So the transition game's not going the way of the Lions. Mustangs hand it off there to Arthur. Arthur trying to get down the lane. Back to the other Arthur. Steps up, tries to fire that one. It's no good. Treat with the rebound. 
Wallace down to Dipper. Dipper with the pivot. Gonna get a foul underneath. Looks like 22, Mason Thomas gonna pick up his first. And he did about the as well as he could. He put his hands up there and Dipper brings his arms across and then he hits him. It's a three point bucket from number 22, Kalen Brown. He had some big shots in their sectional championship game. New Wash saves it. New Wash able to retain possession there. Nice floater, unable to get that one though. Out to Biko. Biko down to Dipper. He's gonna get fouled, number 22. Mason Thomas gonna pick up probably his second here. Yep. In comes 14, Connor Schaefer. And Schaefer's been the one on defense that's really kind of uh, giving those guards some uh, heck up front there for the Mustang, so I think that's a good move getting him back in there. Comes Dipper in throws straight one to down Dipper. Right Dipper back. goes up and flushes it, gives him 10 on the day. Comes back, blocks it on the other end. Gonna get a foul. I believe they're gonna get 14 for that. Which is Connor Schaefer, his first. Six Somebody was gonna get a foul. There was just a lot of people uncontrolled yeah. down there. I mean, New Wash has just never seen a player of this size all season, so and then yeah. trying to counteract it with what they've got. We're going to see this. I mean, Dipper's going to be in a, a lot of – they're probably going to hack him a lot, so he's going to have to be able to shoot some free throws here as we go along. That's their seventh team foul, so we're going to be one and one the rest of the half. First one up and no good. That one also no good, but Biko able to get it up. Wow, he got that ball stolen right under the net by Arthur. New Walsh is just having to run their offense from 40 feet out. That's the only issue. Yeah, Arthur puts that one up. It's no good. And every shot is a fadeaway and not towards the basket because of the size of Rock Creek. Wallace for three. Boom. Right there. That's going to be a timeout. 11 there. point lead here. New wash timeout. Going to be a full timeout. We're going to step aside, take a commercial break, be back in just a moment. Lynx Clothing and Shoes carries a wide variety of items from name brand clothing and shoes to sports apparel and sporting goods. We offer custom screen printing and embroidery, free gift wrapping alternations and layaway. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5.30, Friday 9 to 6, and Saturday 9 to 5. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and are a family owned and operated business. Stop by and see us today, 
Back to action here at Jack Butcher Arena where the new Washington Mustangs are trailing by 11 to the Rock Creek Lions. It's been an all big man show so far for the Lions. Mariel Dipper has 10 of their points, 10 of their 20, so he's got half of them. Yeah, and New Wash has not been able to stop him. New Wash has gotten some good looks, Craig, but once again, they just, like we saw in the earlier game, just can't get him to fall. Inbound comes to Arthur. Just over four minutes to go here in the first half. Turnover from New Wash. Ahead to Brown. Brown able to get that one up. Kind of stepped a little funny, but still able to <laughs> knock it down. He kept his footing and got it down. That three is a miss. Another attempt. That one no good. Going to say it's going to go over to Rock Creek. That ball flew off of somebody's head or something. Yeah. It went out of bounds. Fan on the front row there helping us out. Wallace brings it up. In the corner to Biko, down to Treat. Treat with a nice spin move. Flips it back to Dipper Here's to get Dipper. his 12th point. Dipper was kind of held in check in their sectional championship game. Not a ton of points, but he's definitely made a difference here today in this regional. Arthur knocks that one down. Much needed for the Mustangs there, Craig. Yeah. I think they had a 14-2 run going on there. Rock Creek going to run through their offense once again. Dipper with position down low, gets the ball up and on the boards, it's good. 14 points on the day for him. Hessig for three, that one no good. Hessig thought about that one for a little bit, was wide open. And it looks like Hessig picked up a foul on that end. Yep. Going to be his first. Team's eighth. <laughs> Memphis Jackson back in. <laughs> Dipper's first one up and no good. You know, the only thing he's not done well today is shoot free throws. He has played so well down low for the Lions. Hessig unable to knock that one down. So Rock Creek rebounds it and goes back the other way down to Dipper. Dipper goes up and gets hammered underneath. Number 22, Mason Thompson. Looks like he picked that one up. That's going to be his third. Coach Winchester talked about how Mason was one of the, the uh, leaders of the team there. So not having him on the floor will definitely be a, a tough call here for last 146 for the Mustangs. That one up and no good. In comes 14, Connor Schaefer. Dipper, Dipper gets his 15th one. point of the day. Arthur coming up. Nice bucket there by him. Gives him eight. And 
Yep, going to be a travel coming back. Nice. Craig, if you remember that interview with Coach Brown, I brought that up about um, Treat or one of these big guys trying to you know, handle the ball a little too much. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, well, they didn't bring it all the way down the floor this time, so. No, no. Arthur, guarded by Jackson, gets down in the lane. He's going to go to the line for two. I believe they're going to get Dipper for that. Yep. Oh, nope, they're going to get Jackson. His first. Arthur's first one up and good. We're going to have a timeout here, I believe, by the Mustangs. It's going to be a 30 seconds. We're going to step aside for a quick commercial break and be back in just a moment. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Back to action here in Regional 32 in the southern part of the state where Rock Creek does lead New Washington 27 to 15. And you know, this game feels like it should be more than 12 points right now, Craig. So if New Washington could somehow string together a good last minute of this half, they could really change the outlook of this game. Yeah, you're exactly right. They swing it over the top to Wallace, to out to Biko. I tell you what, Wallace is just such a great point guard. He, yeah. he controls this team, and I, it's, their success rides on his shoulders. Rock Creek going to hold the ball here for the last 43 seconds. Very good move by the Lions here. Trying to just capitalize, get one play, keep that big lead there. Not let New Wash get a run to end the half. Twenty-four to go. Swing it all the way across. They go with a little flare out to Wallace. Wallace for three. Bang. Man. That's a huge play. Let's that one fly, no good. So we're gonna end the half with Rock Creek up 30 to 15. We're gonna step aside um, for the commissioner's corner and we'll be back in just a moment. It's time for the Commissioner's Corner, an exclusive weekly conversation about Indiana high school sports with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. Now for an up-to-the-minute report about what's happening in the constantly changing world of high school sports, here's Coach Bob Lovell with Commissioner Paul Neidig. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Bob Lovell. This is our weekly conversation with the commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Nighting, and we talk about all things related to the IHSAA. And commissioner, we are in the middle of it, quite frankly. We are doing what are all those things we do at this particular time of year, and it is a fun, fun thing to be involved in it because it's championship time. And uh, I know we're talking about uh, boys' regionals, but this weekend, girls' gymnastics, they're fighting it out for a championship uh, up at uh, Ball State University at Wortham Arena. What an exciting time for those ladies. 
You know, often, oftentimes the mainstream is uh, we don't uh, – gymnastics is not out there on the front page of the paper like some other sports are, but it's their day. Uh, and this week is where their season is going to come to a culmination to a state championship at Worthen Arena. And, and uh, you know, it's like anything else we've talked before, Coach. We've got some incredible gymnasts in this state, kids that have dedicated their life to the sport. They're going to compete as a team and individuals, and then they're going to uh, – we're going to crown a state champion at the end of the day on Saturday. So really looking forward to that event. Well, it's been a tremendous uh, championship year to date. We talked last week about uh, two national records set in swimming. Uh, you're talking about great things going on. Uh, Monday night sectionals were wrapped up around the state due to the inclement weather. We had buzzer beaters. We had great games. And now the field is set for Saturday's regionals around the state. We've got our one-game regionals coming up this weekend. So teams have, uh, you know, as they, they've got through that tough sectional week, and now they just need to get their team ready to play one game. We've got some, once again, great matchup. There's a lot of eyes are going to be on that Cathedral Ben Davis game at Southport. Mm-hmm. But that's just not... That's, that's a big one, but there's going to be a lot of other games yeah. throughout the state right. that are incredibly competitive. So, and I've asked you this question, but as we get into the regional round, the, the reaction seemed to be positive on the new format uh, from the girls' tournament. It seemed to have positive thoughts uh, around the state, and uh, certainly the, uh, the intensity of play was always there, and I think you're expecting the same thing on Saturday. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Coach. We saw some uh, we saw some things that we, you know, we, we as the old educators go, we had a hypothesis of what that tournament was going to look like as we advanced it in a different way. And I think uh, what we got was what we expected. We expected to have more engagement across the state, uh, which we saw. Uh, and at the end of the day, and there's a lot of reasons for this, but we had the largest girls' attendance in the state championship weekend that we've had since 2009. And and, you know, within a, in a day where, you know, we're always looking to increase the number of eyes on what we do. Right. Uh, we had huge attendance numbers for the girls' championship. And very rarely do we open up the balcony at uh, the home of the Pacers, Gamebridge Fieldhouse. And this year we did. And uh, that was really uh, fun to do. Glad we could do it. And uh, I think uh, this is shaping up like the girls' tournament to be an incredible weekend. But we'll continue to study it. and and make sure it was the right way to go. But early returns, uh, certainly we believe that we've made the right change for the tournament to really help the enthusiasm of it. As crazy as it sounds, we're going to be opening up for baseball and softball practice and track and field. <laughs> we probably we already are, but we're going to be competing in those uh, sports very, very soon. Absolutely, Coach. I've said, I'm uh, in Lowell, Indiana today talking to you, and I was talking to the athletic secretary as I came in the, uh, the office this morning. They were counting money box. And I said, what do you, what did you have last night? <laughs> They've our the track meets have started. They had an indoor track meet last night. And uh, so the, the track and field athletes are out there right now uh, competing already. So again, it's on. Springtime is right around the corner. We're just waiting for those trees to bud out and, and get a little warmer weather. But uh, we're ready to celebrate some spring, spring state championships um, in the coming months. Paul Neidig, the commissioner of the IHSAA. This is our weekly conversation about all things IHSAA-related. Commissioner, it's always great to spend time with you. I know you and your staff are going to be out checking out some basketball. Be safe. I'll look forward to our conversation next week. Absolutely, Coach. Thank you for doing what you do, and we'll see. talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to The Commissioner's Corner with IHSAA Commissioner Paul Neidig and Coach Bob Lovell. And thank you for your continued support of the high schools in your community. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. Or just visit our website. Gates, Carnegie, Rockefeller, I'm not. Generous, caring, rich in spirit, I am. 
You don't have to be a person of great wealth to make an impact. When caring individuals give through a flexible, creative, capable organization known as a community foundation, our philanthropic potential is unlimited. As your local community foundation, we provide you the opportunity to permanently support the causes you care about both near and far. We do this by protecting and administering permanent funds through thoughtful grant making to improve the quality of life in the community we serve. Simply put, donors who give through a community foundation build sustainable, permanent funds called endowments through contributions big and small to support organizations they care about most, forever. Through the generosity of our many donors and the responsible, informed investment of permanent funds, we will increase our grant-making ability for the benefit of our community for generations to come. All we need is you. What causes are you passionate about? What organization matters most to you? We can help you ensure your charitable interests are supported forever. Donors can give to an existing endowment or establish their own. Some choose to give now, while others make their gift later through their will or estate plan. To learn what your options are, talk to your community foundation. We're here to help you reach your philanthropic goals. If you love our community, let's leave our little corner of the world a bit better than we found it. Not just today, but for future generations too. The Washington County Community Foundation has been making our home a terrific place to live, work, and play since 1993 through the generosity of donors just like you. Why? Well, just like you, we also really love our community. Back to action here at Jack Butcher Arena where the Rock Creek Lions do lead 30 to 15 over the new Washington Mustangs. Brad, first half was all Mario Dipper. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to that guy, the only thing he didn't do was I think he went one for four from the free throw line. But other than that, um, that young man had himself quite a half, and he's been the difference maker in this game. You're you're exactly right. You know, he, he had 15 points in the first half. Um, Gavin Taylor had two. Ladarius Wallace was six. And Jalen Treat with two. They shot one of five from the free throw line for 20%. They were 10 of 17 for 59% from two-point range, three of five from three-point range for 60%. So overall, 13 of 22 for 59% from the field. New Wash, on the other hand, they had Matthew Arthur with 10, Paul Glittner with two, and those were, oh, and Connor Schaefer with a three. Um, so overall, they were two of four from the free throw line for 50%, five of 12 from two-point range for 41%, one of 13 from the three-point line for 7%. So overall, they were six of 25 for 24% in the first half. And if you re rewound this tape, you probably heard us say, that's the key there is making sure they get those threes to fall. And I don't know what it is about Jack Butcher Arena today, Craig, but Nobody is shooting the three ball very well. Yeah, you're you're exactly right. The big story, though, is the foul situation. Mason Arthur with two, uh, Mason Thompson with three, and Paul Glittner with two, all for the um, New Washington Mustangs. The only person with two fouls for Rock Creek is Gavin Taylor. So, I think you got to roll the dice if you're Coach Winchester, though, don't you? You got to go out and you got to say, hey, you know, you you, you got to ride that horse that got you here. Hey, play smart, you know, and, and go. Because if not, it could get even worse than what it is at 15 points. Now, that being said, in sectional play and regional play and state play, this can all flip really quickly. But it's going to take a team effort by the Mustangs to get themselves back in this. Right. So the Mustangs come out with their starting five, as do the Rock Creek Lions. I think we got everybody's shirts tucked in there and ready to roll. Ball comes into Arthur. He's guarded by Taylor with those two fouls. Arthur spins, tries to get it up. No good. Treat comes out with the board. Great rebound there by the Mustangs. 
Mason Thompson comes up with it. Nice move underneath by five, Paul Glittner for his fourth point of the day. Biko down on the baseline into Dipper who gets blocked by the rim. Going up, trying to dunk that one, unable to get it. Newash gets it over just in time. Arthur I must drives. say I was counting my head. That one no good. Able to pull it down. We're the Mustangs and run back through their offense again. Rock Creek out in a man-to-man. -man. That's a deep three there by number 14, wow. Connor Schaefer. Cuts the lead He's to hit 10. two of them, I think, in this game. He has got some pop to that shot there. Ten-point lead here now for the Lions. So we talked about that. The Mustangs trying to fall their way back into this. New Wash comes out in a 2-3 zone, it looks like. Biko drives. He's going to go to the long. Oh, no, they're going to call it on the floor. Biko have any points yet there, Craig? Uh, no. Mason Thompson picks up his fourth. So he's going to go to the bench. There's a dunk again Nobody's going to stop Dip. Yep. He went up strong that time. Arthur tries to knock that one down, unable to get it. New Watch comes away with it there. He gives it right back. Jalen Treat with a nice move there. Gives him four on the day. Rock Creek going to bring Lions some defense pressure here. Back. Yeah, they're not going to – They they've got, got the Mustangs right where they want them here. So they're going to bring that press. That three no good. Going to be a turnover. Both teams getting Rock real sloppy Creek. in the passing game. And number My five, take. Glittner goes up, gets a two-point bucket to fall, and a foul on Biko. Going to be Biko's first. Both teams getting real sloppy here in the second half of their passing, Craig. Biko gets it. He drives throw. up. He's going to... Be Another turnover, turnover coming by the back Mustangs. Both ways out to Dipper. That's the third dunk for Dipper tonight. Gives him 19 in the game. That one's short. Dipper out with the rebound. And there's going to be a timeout by New Washington. Yeah, 30-second timeout here. Them. We're going to stick with you. Just nothing that New Wash can do. There's, they're, you know, they don't have the height to be able to stop that underneath, and, and Dipper just keeps going at it. 
each time you know he he puts it up if he doesn't get it he's the first person back up to go get it you are correct craig they're going to have to find a way to um you know the only way new wash can do it is if they can knock down those threes and they've gotten some looks but they just uh nothing has really fallen for them there and they've everybody's gotten a little sloppy with the ball if this game gets sloppy that's going to be to the advantage of rock creek they're they're used to playing at that that really fast pace right Right, and Newash, you know, sped it up a little bit there, trying to get back in this game, and they did did well for a minute or so, and then it just got out of hand. So both teams coming back to the floor. Newash to inbound the ball here. And Rock Creek's just been showing a little pressure right there at the beginning, then dropping back. Trying to stay out of foul trouble. Pesic misses that one out ahead to Taylor. Leaves it off for Wallace. Wallace misses that one. Dipper there for the follow. It's Dipper's world. We're just living in it, man. I yeah. tell you, he has had such a great game. 23 so far, and we still have four minutes to, or three minutes to go here in the third. I don't think he's came off the floor either. That's a nice pass underneath to Hessig for his first two-point bucket of the night. Dipper again with another dunk. And New Wash has been doubled up here, 42 to 24. Almost as the scoreboard's at the opposite ends of it. As there's another turnover. Taylor with it. He dribbles around. Oh, gets it stolen there by Arthur. Arthur misses that three. Underneath the dipper. Going to go out of bounds. Still be Rock Creek's ball. Oh, stolen. nice steal. Another feed in time. This time, time for treat. Dipper gets it. He's going to bring it out. No, he's going to drive in. No timeout, time Chris Brown. Like Chris Come Brown, 30-second timeout. We're going to step aside take a quick commercial uh, from Eddie Gilstrap Motor. We'll be back in just a moment. At Eddie Gilstrap, our customers are family. Rated in the top 6% nationwide in Ford dealers, we pride ourselves on our no-pressure environment, honesty, and integrity. Come see us today and discover why we're different. Eddie Gilstrap Motors. Back to live action here at Jack Butcher Arena where the Rock Creek Lions are out ahead, 42-26 over the New Washington Mustangs. Just all Mario Dipper in this game. 25 points so far, four big dunks. I mean, just no answer for him from the New Washington Mustangs. You said 25 points, so when we say a player makes a difference, one player can make a difference, he is right now. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely the difference in this game. Into Dipper again. That one up and good. 27 for him on the day. Yeah. Going to be a foul on the floor. I think they're going to get Gavin Taylor for that one. Going to be his third. Okay, well, Biko comes back in. Biko has not scored. 
No, he's he's um, been kind of quiet, but he's played a great role today because you know his team's up by this much. Seven footer just makes the shot change. Yeah, you know whether he blocks it or not, he's there to change it. So. Fourteen Schaefer, correct? Yeah, he is not showing any, any uh, fear though. He's went in there right. just multiple times, which is kind of what you have to have. And you have to be able to dink and duck a play. You got to have somebody else that's also fearful. Get get a player um, of Dipper or of uh, Treats' uh, ability just up in the air. Wallace goes down with a big layup down on the other end. Fouls on 44, Hessig, his second. Wallace gonna go to the line, try to knock down the first free throw of the half. Oh, no good, but Treat with the rebound, that one up and good. Treat approaching double digits also, and he's just had a quiet night. But he hasn't yeah, really had to do much. He's got six so far. Oh, and no good. Biko out ahead to Treat. Treat with the layup. He said it. Now he's approaching it. He's at eight. Next bucket for yeah. Treat. Gets him ten. That's a deep three for Mason Arthur. You know, Craig, that's something, too, if we had, you know, the sad ability, how far out New Walsh has had to shoot these threes. Yeah. Because of the size of Rock Creek and where they've made them play, there's not been a lot real close to the line. 50-26 here, 45 seconds left to go. Rock Creek in no rush. Earlier on today, Lagodi punched their ticket to the – in my state. Jackson Dale got their ticket punched along with Indianapolis Lutheran. So those are the three so far in the southern half of the state for 1A. It'll be interesting where that one is hosted at. You know, they look at it. In 3A, I saw Scottsburg had punched their ticket. Yeah, they, they punched theirs. Jalen Treat from the free throw line. That one up and good. There's there you the go. 10. There's, the, there's the 10. I'm Call me Nostradamus. <laughs> Biko with a steal. Treat up and good. So that's going to bring us to the end of our third quarter. Rock Creek. 54, New Wash 26. We're going to step aside, have a commercial break, be back in just a moment. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for kids, teens, or young adults. It's just not. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs. And dangerous things like metals and volatile organic compounds into your body. And nicotine, the same highly addictive substance found in regular cigarettes. Nicotine can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. Affecting learning, memory, attention, and impulse control. And priming the brain for other addictions. Vaping products also come in kid-friendly flavors that can make them appealing to youth. And many kids also use other drugs, like marijuana, in vaping devices. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping. Because when you talk, they hear you. Back to live action here at Jack Butcher Arena, where the uh, 
Rock Creek Lions are leading 54-26. It's a great day to be a Lion if you're in Jack Butcher Arena. Lagodi Lions already with the win. Rock Creek looking to add on to that. I believe this would be their first regional in school history. If I'm correct. I believe you are correct. It's going to be a turnover. Mason Thompson dribbles in, was able to get a foul there on Dipper. He was uh, uh, frustrated there. You know, he's trying not to pick up his fifth at all, but um, was able to get around him and get there. Arthur you hangs in the, the air, up. gets that one to go. Nice play. He's a great ball player, great shooter. I don't know his final stats on his career there at New Washington, but they've came a long way since his freshman year there. Arthur goes to the line. That one up and good for him. Gives him 13. Walsh just provides that leadership there, senior leadership for this Lions offense. You see him just calmly, how he handles the ball out there. All right. Brown up and gets that one to go. Another look back at the Mason Arthur foul earlier, where he's able Arthur to hang in the air, gets that, that one, one to go. Gonna be a, the third foul on Connor Schaefer. I think for sectional and regional, we should have those little towel guys down below the baskets. <laughs> You know, just 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 give a kid a water bottle and a towel and say, hey, you know, because it seems like we've spent, Craig, you can attest this, it seems like we've spent so much time, like, rubbing the court to get all the sweat off of it. Right. You're correct. Finding a towel. 22, Brown goes to the line, puts that one up, and it's good. He's got six. And he is he's going to be a great player for these Lions, too, watching his confidence, as I've seen him play a couple games this year. A two-point miss by the Mustangs. Rebound out to Treat, I believe, came down with that one. Wallace in the corner to Treat at the elbow. Steps back and gets it taken away. Becca with a rebound seal. Here we go. Wallace flips it up to Dipper. Dipper inside. Looks, and he's going to put it in for two. What do we got for him, 28? 29. 29. Knocking on the 30-point door here. Another rebound coming out. Wallace with a nice fake. Gets him 10. That's 10 for Wallace, 12 for Treat, 29 for Dipper. That one up and no good. Dipper with the rebound. He's going to bring the ball to the floor. Treat drives up and good for two. Coach Winchester might just want to take a time out here to give his team a breather because they are um, struggling the up and down here. Dipper with the rebound, going to bring it up. Going to be a kickball. Jackson checks in for Brown.
Lob pass right there to Treat. Gives him 16. Nice three there for the Mustangs. They bring it in the feed there. It's going to be Dipper who gets it stripped away. Brought back to the Mustangs. Nice take by Arthur off the round. And that's going to be Walsh with the foul there. All kinds of confusion there. I don't know if it was who the foul was on Craig or not. Officials are going to go to the booth there. New Washington inbound and under their own basket here. Flip it in. Shot is up and it is off. Goes to Treat. Treat dribbles it out. Passes it off to Wallace. Wallace flips it down the floor. Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, we got somebody down and hurt on this end of the floor. Looks like he slid into the uh, into the bleacher. So looks like number five, Paul Glittner, is down. He slid into the the front row of the bleachers. So we're gonna step aside, take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back in just a moment. We all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. Alex is just and adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Back to live action here. It looks like Paul Glittner uh, slides across the floor and gets into the front row of the bleachers where he uh, split his, his upper eye, like his eye uh, brow area, um, and got part of his lip too. So he's over on the, on the bench. Uh, trainers are taking care of him, so that's a great uh, job here by the training staff. Now we've got a little bit of blood cleanup down on the side. But he made it back to the bench, though. He's safe yeah, back he, to their bench. Yeah, he stood up and walked back to the bench. So, Awesome. Yeah, those bleachers there in Lagodi are, whenever that gym is constructed, it's a pretty tough one. I would not want to hit them. Yeah, they are concrete and then metal. So, going to stay with Rock Creek here. As now, does this, gym, uh, Mr. Does, does this gym, Mr. Akers, give you uh, – Newcastle vibes, kind of? A little bit. It needs about 30 more rows on top of where it is, and then it'll be there. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Wallace with the take there. He gets the bucket. New Wash going to be looking to 67-32 here. Those of you at home notice the clock runs because of the 35-point differential. Uh, it'll continue to run other than timeouts and free throws. So. That one no good from uh, New Wash, so gonna be turnover. Yeah, this gym has got a lot of history. Uh, for me, you know, being in Southern Indiana, I know you're a Northern Indiana guy there, but I always when I when I got to visit Newcastle, I thought, hey, this is like Lagodi's gym on steroids. Yeah. And then yeah. I've also been the Huntingburg is yep. a little bigger than this one. 
a great place, a great venue. Big thank you to Lagodi for hosting this. Rock Creek going to run some time out on top. They drive. That one no good. Arthur looking to get a shot up, unable to do so. Creek with the rebound. He's going to bring it up the floor. We see a whole slew of uh, Rock Creek players getting ready to check in the game. A whole, new, a whole new pride of Lions are going to check in. Yep, we got four Rock Creek players and three new Washington players coming in. So both coaches clearing out their benches. It looks like the two seniors for New Watch are hanging in there for their final curtain call. Yeah, you're exactly right. So Arthur still with the ball. It's going to be Nord guarding him. Arthur turns, tries to get an open shot, not able to get it. That one up and no good. Rock Creek going to get the ball. And then we're going to get two more. The two seniors going to come out. Great job there by Arthur and Thompson. Like I said, they've been through it, uh, a big rebuilding program there at New Wash to win a sectional. There's no shame. Rock Creek running through the offense still. 44 with the shot. That one up and no good. Three-point miss. It's going to be another two. You watch a lot of four. young players in there. Oh. <laughs> two, two players kind of get wrapped up there. Yeah. Well, you hope everybody comes out. Healthy in that case because you know it's late here in the game and right that just didn't look good at all. And it looks as if the Lions are going to go here. claim their first regional title in school history. Just they're like before, put away the. Just like before, we're going to leave the cameras on. We're going to turn our mics off. You're going to hear the crowd audio. Uh, thanks for those of you who have turned, tuned in. A you know, great game by Rock Creek. Great game by New Wash. Rock Creek just had the upper hand tonight. Brad, give you a final sign off. Hey, I tell you what, uh, Craig, we've got the Rock Creek Lions, a team that is getting hot at the right time. They uh, are going to go into next week's semi state, like we said, with Indianapolis Lutheran, Jacksonville, I believe we said, Craig. Correct. And, uh, and uh, of course, uh, Lagodi here. We'll see those pairings tomorrow. They're a team that can be a mismatch nightmare for a lot of those teams. So it'll be interesting to see what we have. They came through tonight, and their big players played big in the absolute biggest time they needed. They're going to celebrate um, their school's first regional championship, um, and they're going to have two, hopefully two more games next Saturday. Craig, thank you, and thanks to our host, Lagodi, and the I should say Network for letting us come on and hear West Washington live stream. Uh, what a great basketball season we've had.